I know this might sound crazy. I don't want to alarm you. Do you remember a TV show we used to watch together? It was called... The Pink of Eight? Yeah. It's not often that I say this, but there's just some movies that suck so bad they shouldn't even exist. The Dark Age of Cinema brought us a lot of those. People could find some hidden gems among the independent films that debuted here and there, but not all of those were good. And now we get a movie like I Saw the TV Glow. Audiences seem to be going nuts over this movie, but why? Was this movie really that good? Or was it Hollywood's conditioning of audiences to accept garbage? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. When I first started my channel, I coined the term the dark age of cinema to describe films that debuted roughly from 2009 to the present that essentially lacked good story and character development in lieu of the message. With Top Gun Maverick, I saw the light at the end of the woke tunnel, but it's been a long, arduous road so far. We're still getting films that by and large suck and have lazy racer gender swapping, infallible Mary Sue girl bosses, and supremely bad writing. In 2024, that's where we find ourselves. For the most part, the writing in TV and films has been abysmal, with not just all the woke stuff crammed in, characters with no arc or development, stories that are lackluster at best with, again, no real arc, is what we've been generally getting for the past decade plus. I wish I could say this movie broke the mold and bucked the trend, but sadly, I'd be lying. It's all style and no content. I know, I know, this review will piss off a lot of people, but someone's gotta do this, so let's get to it, shall we? I Saw the TV Glow begins in 1996, where lonely 7th grader Owen, or Discount Will Smith, befriends Maddie, or Discount Emma Mackey, a 9th grade lesbian, over their shared obsession of the cringe-worthy teen show, The Pinko Pig. Fast forward two years and Discount Emma Mackey is an outcast and Discount Will Smith is dealing with a dying mom. With his dad mocking his favorite show, Discount Emma Mackey becomes his bootlegger, taping episodes for him. She even tries to rope him into running away, but he chickens out. Predictably, his mom dies, Maddie disappears, and the show gets axed. Jump to 2008, where Discount Will Smith is stuck in a dead-end job when Discount Emma Mackey resurfaces, taking him to a bar straight out of their favorite show. She spins a wild tale about literally burying herself alive to escape reality, only to wake up in TV land as her true self. She convinces Owen to try it, but he bails. Years later, his dad dies, he becomes a family man, and rediscovers this cheesy show, now realizing it was trash. At work, he has a meltdown, sees a TV in his chest, and then awkwardly apologizes to indifferent partygoers before the screen cuts to black. That's it. That's the plot of the film, if you can even call it a plot. Before going to see I Saw the TV Glow, I had no idea what the movie was about, and I went in blind. Throughout the movie, I squirmed in my seat at the painfully boring dialogue that didn't provide any answers as to what this damn movie was about. I mean, seriously, the dialogue writing in this movie is almost as abysmal as the actors delivering the lines. The conversations occur with awkward pauses and long, drawn-out silences that suggested to me the characters were either autistic or some kind of retarded. Everybody knows you never go full retard. I'm sure that with a little practice, Justice Smith can become a, an okay actor like his dad. But as it stands now, his delivery of such poorly written lines is nothing short of autistic. Likewise, Bridget Lundy Payne delivered a performance that was all over the place, shifting from tomboy to lesbian to pretty girl. I haven't seen her in much of anything else, so I can't really tell if she can be a good actress, but whatever, this movie won't be doing her any favors. During the movie, I kept impatiently waiting for the damn thing to end because it was so damn boring and drawn out that I nearly fell asleep. The film's plot never really arrived at any kind of resolution and just ended. What made the movie so damn bad was its piss poor writing and terrible exposition. I can give it some brownie points for presenting it in a stylish way, but anytime you juxtapose the stylish and colorful scenes with the washed out, depressing, and poorly lit scenes, it makes it really visually jarring. Now let's get to the real meat of why you're all here. As I was walking out of the theater, I was just as confused as the couple sitting next to me who said to each other, next time I'll pick the movie. So I wasn't the only one that found this movie terrible and confusing, but I still wanted to know if I'd somehow missed something. It turns out I didn't. 
When I got home, I naturally went on the rotting cesspool that is Reddit to see what other people thought of the movie. I was shocked to see how many people loved this movie. It truly is perplexing how many people there were. This was by far not only the worst movie of 2024, but quite possibly the biggest piece of rotting garbage I've ever seen. And then I read about what the movie is meant to signify. The lived experience of the trans community. I don't know where they got that from. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a right way and a wrong way to portray those in the transgender community. The best film I can think of in this genre is The Danish Girl that was nominated for a whole plethora of awards. But there are plenty others, like Boys Don't Cry, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, Dallas Buyers Club, Tootsie, and even To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, are all better representations of what those people go through. Many people are saying that this was meant to be a metaphor for that, but I don't see it that way. If you were to tell me that I saw the TV glow as a metaphor for the trials and tribulations of the autism spectrum or some other kind of mental illness, I would definitely buy that. The weird and awkward dialogue by Justice Smith made it seem like the kid was suffering from autism rather than transgenderism. At no point did my brain even associate either of the main characters as transgender. Weird and awkward? Possibly autistic? Sure. But aside from discount Emma Mackey being a lesbian, there really wasn't much of a clue into more of the Alphabet Soup stuff. Perhaps the biggest problem in I Saw the TV Glow was its writing. If it truly was meant to be a metaphor for transgenderism, then it was very poorly executed. Audiences were all confused as to what the film was even trying to go for, since it never even alludes to this. I'm not asking to be spoon-fed the meaning of a movie directly, but what I do need is the film's exposition to at least allude to its intended message and not to be so vague to the point of missing the entire message in the first place. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like I Saw the TV Glow? And if so, what do you think made it good? And are audiences right to be confused about the film's message? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.